Why are you saying these things? Because it's true. You didn't really believe I'd give up on you, did you, Josh? And he's dead. No. Not really. Feel it. Take it. It's warm. And alive. Alive and well and back in Springfield, just living under an assumed face. <laughs> Oh, well, I guess I can see the drug isn't absolutely perfect because he used to have a much better sense of humor. Oh, well. You can't possibly be Annie. You don't even look like her. Oh, Josh. That is the beauty of cosmetic surgery. Really. Now, I, I know this is a lot for you to comprehend right now, but I want you to know. I want you to understand exactly what I did for you. I mean, yes. I was able to fake my death twice, but it was not easy. I mean, try blowing up a boat without actually being on it. That's hard. I, I even stole a body from the morgue for you, Josh. Just so it would look like someone was on the stupid boat when I blew it up. Yuck. That's why I chose being a cop. Because cops can get in anywhere. Tell you the truth. I've kind of had a good time doing it. It's been fun. Well, okay, with the exception of putting up with Frank Cooper's horny, stupid jokes. But, hey, I pulled it off. I convinced everybody that Annie's dead. Especially using my own hair for testing Annie's DNA. And I especially like being at the reading of my own will. And, and how about the cursed coin? I thought that was a... Fabulous flair, if I do say so myself. I don't understand. Shh, baby. Baby, you don't have to understand. Not at all. I mean, you're probably just trying to figure out how I pulled off this new identity. How I managed to get hired by the Springfield PD. <laughs> That's the best story of all. You see, there really is a police detective by the name of Terry DeMarco in Detroit. And she really does come from this big, loving family, just the way I described it. But, unfortunately, poor Terry. She had a little accident. She's in a coma, tucked away someplace safely with the rest of the poor soul suffering the way she is. So you know what I did? I went to the doctor. I had a little work done. Here I am. And isn't it amazing what a few damaged vocal cords can do to change the tone of your voice. <sighs> She's not a bad-looking woman, either. I mean, I, that was one of the reasons I picked her. I wanted you to think she was pretty. <sighs> so I've taken over this chick's life. And now I'm going to take over Riva's. Starting with you. <laughs> How? What are you going to do to her? Oh, relax, Josh. I could have killed Riva a hundred times since I've been back. But you know what? That's not good enough. Not nearly good enough. And you know what? You probably just mourn her anyway, so that would be a total waste of time. No, no. What I have in store for Riva is much worse than death. You know, Josh, those things you were yelling at Annie that night, well, I guess I don't have to say Annie, I guess I can say me. The things that you were yelling at me that night at Carousel Farm, they really hurt my feelings. I mean, you were so cruel, and I think you owe me an apology. I... Say you're sorry, Josh. I'm sorry. That's better. Much better. I know you really didn't mean most of the things you said anyway, because you told Terry that, that you had mixed feelings about everything, that you were that sad that Annie had died. You, you felt guilty that she had died. Isn't that so? Yes. Okay. 
So now that we're here, and you're still feeling the influence of this drug, I want to ask you one question. And I want you to tell me the truth. Did you love me, Josh? I mean, really, really love me? Would we have spent the rest of our lives together if stupid Reba hadn't come back? I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. And if you love me once, you can love me again. You can learn. And it makes my whole plan worth it. Plan? Well, I wasn't going to lay everything out all at once, but what the heck? I mean, I can always make you forget whatever I want you to forget. So, yeah, here it goes. I'm going to make Reba experience the torture that I went through. I am going to leave her life in a shambles. You're going to fall out of love with her and eventually fall in love with me. Because I have been very patient, my love. I have waited a long time for this, and I am going to save her every single second of it. Every second. I'm going to watch her ache as you turn away from her and you come to me. I am going to take from her what she holds most dear. And I'm going to leave her drowning in her misery. <laughs> For now, for now you love Reva, but you'll love me. You will love me. Well, well, not me, because Annie will be gone, but you will fall head over heels in love with Terry DeMarco. And it will be a love like you've never had before. And you know the great thing about it? Nobody will suspect a thing. That little bottle is going to bring me back to you and you back to me. In time. Fine. In time. In time. You will crave my kisses. And you will love me. In time. Selena, you expect me to let you take a few days off with just a few days notice? Yeah, I'd really appreciate it. It's gonna take me a while to try and find my daughter. I have an appointment with all these government agencies that put her up for adoption while I was in prison. Well, that's very touching. But I hired you to do a job here. You haven't even earned a vacation. This isn't a vacation. You are not here. You are on vacation. Well, Lori already quit today, Selena. I, I can't afford to let you go. Well, I'm really sorry, and I don't want to leave you hanging. But these appointments cannot be broken. I may never be able to set them up again. Well, so what? You ditched your daughter for, what is it, 20 years now? And now, now you want to be a mother. Why don't you do her a favor? Stay here, do your job, and let her live her life. And just when I was beginning to think you had a heart... I'm glad I'm manager in your place. What? I, I didn't raise my voice. You gotta work on your people skills, Drew. Well, you're not having too much fun. Hey, Bill. Come on over and join us. Thanks, but, um, I'm waiting for Jesse. Yeah, well, he may be a while, and I think we're having a whole lot more fun than you just standing here by yourself. <laughs> Thanks, but, uh, I can't. Why, are you afraid that Jesse might have a problem seeing you with me? No. Well, then what is it? I won't bite. Or maybe you're afraid that I'll kiss you again. I don't want to talk about that anymore. Okay, fine. I'll let it go if you just come over and join us. Sure, why not? Hey, yo, Billy boy. Thank you for taking care of my new roomie, but I think I can handle it from here. 
You moved in together already? Well, not quite. Well, any day now. You gotta check out what we got. We got a loft upstairs from here. Amazing. Unbelievable. So Drew's your landlady now. We're living over a club? How cool is that? You gonna have some parties? Yeah, man. We're, we're thinking of throwing a party on Friday, and you're all invited. Uh, Jesse, yeah. can I talk to you for a minute alone? Yeah, look, I'm sorry I forgot to mention anything about the party, but I figured you'd invite your pre-med friends, and, and Bill, invite everyone you want. No, Bill, don't invite anyone. Why? What's wrong? There's not gonna be a party. 